everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful day. This is Rachel and I am solo today for this show. I also have our dog in the room with me, so if you hear any snores or grunts in the background, that is just him. Um, But today I'm doing a solo show. I'm going to be talking about an area of my expertise, which is gardening. I absolutely love gardening. I've been getting really into it the past um, couple years, and so it's just something that I really enjoy talking about, and I thought, hey, maybe I'll share it with you guys and see if there's some pointers you can take, maybe something you can learn. Um, I'm always learning, so I'm super excited. Today I'm going to be sharing with you seven steps to starting a garden in 2022. We're in winter, so this is the perfect time to start thinking about gardening, Um, But before we get started, I wanted to tell you about a company that I absolutely love. This is my go-to company when it comes to buying flower bulbs. It's called Color Blends, and they have some of the highest quality flower bulbs. All of their bulbs have a certificate of health issued by the USDA and either the Dutch or the British Department of Agriculture. You can shop bundles of daffodils, tulips, hyacinths, alliums, indoor bulbs like amaryllis, and a ton more. There's pages and pages of different colors and sizes and blends, really just anything your heart desires. I actually planted 320 tulip and daffodil bulbs back in October for me and at my parents' house, and I'm so excited to see the beautiful display in our gardens this spring. Hopefully I didn't go way too overboard, but the best thing about flower bulbs is that you can just dig them up and then they won't grow again. So um, head to colorblends.com after the show and check them out. So getting right into the seven steps to starting a garden. These are just steps that I kind of came up with. I thought about the whole process that I went through and um, I don't know, just kind of planned it out one through seven and I just wanted to share that with you today. So step number one is figuring out what your growing zone is. Now, what on earth is a growing zone? Don't worry, I'll tell you. The entire world is broken up into zones 1 through 11, and then those 1 through 11 are also broken up into A and B. So you've got 1A and 1B, 2A and 2B, and so forth. So that number depends on your zip code. For example, I currently live in zone 5B, while my parents, who are only 30 minutes away, they garden in zone 5A. So what that number tells you is how cold your zip code can get on average. So the uh, the lowest temp for my zone 5 is negative 25 degrees Fahrenheit. And we do get those temperatures for about a week or two each winter. It's, it's terrible. But um, yeah, that's zone 5, negative 25 degrees. So if you see those temperatures for maybe a week, maybe two weeks in your area, then you're most likely a zone five. Once you find your zone number, this is going to tell you exactly what plants and flowers you can plant in your garden. For example, let's take an easy one. My favorite tree growing up was the palm tree. My bedroom was decorated in palm trees. My light switch cover was a palm tree. Even my first email address when I was like I don't know, 12, had palm tree in it. So I don't know, just always have loved palm trees. Unfortunately, there are no real in-ground palm trees in Wisconsin because those trees would just never survive our winters. I did Google what zone a palm tree is and it's a zone 6B plus. So it would survive in a 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, or 11. And the lowest temperature that a 6B... um, plant can handle is about negative 10 degrees, which is, I thought that was still really cold. I'm kind of surprised. I don't think I would even risk planting a palm tree if I was in a 6B, maybe 7 just to be safe. But knowing your growing zone just helps you determine what plants you can have as a perennial or an annual in your yard. And that leads to step number two, which is identifying what perennials and annuals you can grow in your zone. Now what's a perennial and what's an annual? I didn't know what those were either. A perennial comes back every year and annuals don't. Think of an annual as a plant or a flower that you have to plant annually. Most tags at your local garden center will tell you what zone the plant is. So since I'm a zone five, if I go to the garden center and find a plant that's hardy to zone two, three, four, or five, that means that it's a perennial and it will survive our winters and it'll come back in full bloom year after year. 
So if I go to the garden center and I see a plant that's labeled zone six and above, six through 11, then that means that it's an annual and I will either have to enjoy it for one season or I'm just gonna have to figure out a way how to uh, overwinter it indoors, which basically just means bringing it in inside. So most annuals in my area are flowers like supertunias, which I love, and I plan on planting those every single spring. They come in a variety of different colors, so I don't mind that they die in the fall because I do enjoy popping some fresh color in my yard in the spring. So now that you have your growing zone and you know how to read a plant tag for a perennial or an annual, now the fun begins and the opportunities are endless. This is what I love about gardening. It can just change every year and it's an, and it's an experiment. So number three is to determine what type of garden you want. Are you looking to grow your own food? Or maybe you only have the space for a container garden. Maybe you're in an apartment or a condo, or maybe you're more like me and you just want your yard to look beautiful and you're okay buying your produce at the store. You can do one or you could do all of these options. If you want to grow your own food, uh, there is a website that I highly recommend buying seeds from. It's called Johnny Seed. I will have them linked in the show notes. Um, and the pictures on their website, they're beautiful. And the seeds are high quality and I think they're pretty affordable. Um, Johnny's also gives you all the information that you need to know about how to plant the seed right on the seed packet. They have a lot more information than normal seed packets do. So if you want to grow your own vegetables, make sure that you have a sunny spot in your yard to do so. Because plants need three things. They need good soil, sun, and water. So container gardening is basically the same. You're just not going to be putting the seeds into the ground. Uh, rather, you're going to be using a container. So you really want to make sure that whatever container you get is large enough um, to house whatever you're growing. For example, zucchini leaves, they get very large. So don't plant them in a tiny little 8-inch pot. You want one of the big, big pots. I've put zucchini seeds in a terracotta large plastic pot, and they did great. I got several zucchini off of the plant. Um, but I also had put some spinach in there with them and the spinach completely got crowded out from the zucchini leaves. So I will not be doing that again. And then if growing food is just not your thing, totally fine. If you just want a beautiful landscape, then I suggest visiting your local garden centers each month throughout the growing season. So spring through fall and just see what you can find. Number four is to start designing your garden. So now that you're aware of what type of garden you want, whether it's growing vegetables or just something pretty or a combination of both, get out a pencil and a piece of paper and start designing what you want your garden to look like. Like I said before, plants and flowers, they need good soil, they need sun, and they need water. So one tool that I've found super helpful is the pre-planned gardens that they have on gardeners.com. I do have that linked in the show notes as well. And I love it because you can customize a raised bed with exactly what you want to grow, or they have plenty of ideas for you. Some of them include things like a cocktail garden for drinks with herbs like basil, lemongrass, rosemary, mint, or you could even create a spaghetti garden and grow things like tomatoes, basil, oregano, onions. There's just so many different possibilities and I'm obsessed. Number five is a fun one, and it's something that can actually be done in the cold winter months. So after you determine what type of garden you want and you have it designed, look and see if there are any seeds you can start now. I know it's usually a lot easier to head to the garden center like everyone else once it's spring and start buying all the pretty things. I am totally among everyone doing that, but you can absolutely start some flowers and vegetables from seed in January. And there's two ways that you can do this. Now, the first way is by using a grow light. Some grow lights are really expensive, uh, but you can absolutely purchase the individual clamp lights and use plastic seed trays, egg cartons, you can even use toilet paper holders. <laughs> you just need to read the back of your seed packet and determine when to start the seeds. If you get your seeds from Johnny Seeds, that information will definitely be on those seed packets. Um, otherwise, if you're not sure, just quickly Google, you know, how, when should I start these seeds indoors? The other way is the winter sowing method. Now winter sowing is, I think by far, the cheapest option. All you need is seed starting soil, which you still need for, um, if you're gonna use grow lights, you need your seeds clearly, and you need a milk jug or a water jug. 
I have a video of me explaining this that I had on my YouTube channel and I'll link that in the show notes, but um, basically you just take a cleaned out gallon milk jug or water jug, you slice around it, leaving it attached by the handle so you can open and close the container without the top coming off. And then what you do is you add your soil, kind of dampen it a little bit, add your seeds, water it in, duct tape it back together, label it, and set it outside in a sunny spot. I did this last year and it worked. The only thing that I did wrong was I didn't move the containers uh, after we got a really heavy snowfall and they ended up being buried for like two or three weeks. And uh, yeah, so that was completely an error on my part. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know why I thought that they were still gonna survive, but they didn't. But before that snowfall, I had looked inside of the containers and there was green growing, green growth in like the middle of February. So it definitely does work. You just wanna make sure that they're sitting on top of the snow. Don't be like me and just forget and have them buried for weeks and make sure that they get enough sun. You shouldn't have to water them because the snow or the rain will pour in from the top. So that's another thing. Also make sure to not leave the cap on. Number six is buying the materials. If you're going the winter sowing route, then you'll need several milk or water jugs, soil, seeds. Um, if you'd rather tend to your seedlings indoors with a grow light system, then you're gonna need to purchase a light or an entire setup. And like I said before, some of these can get pretty pricey, so make sure that you shop around. If you're planning on direct sowing them right into the ground, just think about how you want your raised beds to look. You can have them close to the ground, which means that you can just put up some, some wood and figure out how to connect the wood pieces at the corners. That's pr pretty cheap, pretty affordable. Um, otherwise, you could purchase raised beds that are countertop height that require no bending down. There's a lot of different options. Now, when it comes to soil, if you're starting your seeds and not direct sowing them into the ground, you're going to need a seedling starting soil. I've used the miracle Grow brand. It's in a blue bag. I have it linked in the show notes. It's worked great. Um, and if you're planning on using a raised bed, you're going to, to need to use raised bed mix. miracle Grow has some. I suggest using a Espoma's brand because it's organic. And I think if you're interested in growing your own food, I'm thinking that organic is probably important to you. If you're going to grow flowers indoors, then you'll still need the same seedling starting mix, but then you're also gonna need to um, save up a few larger containers so you can bump up your seedlings when they start to grow out of their cells. So the last one and number seven is kind of a cheesy one, but it's just to enjoy the process and mistakes are part of that. You know, gardening is imperfect. We're all learning what works in our area and what doesn't. As you kind of see with the growing zones, the same state or even the same city can be two completely different growing zones. The best thing you can do is just to start. Gardening is something that you dream and plan for in the winter, and then the second you feel that spring air, it's go time. When spring comes, garden centers everywhere are just filling up, and I don't want you to be like me a couple years ago when I was just so confused, didn't know where to start, and just concluded that maybe I'll try again next year. So to remind you what the seven steps are, again, number one is figuring out your growing zone. Step number two is identifying the difference between an annual and a perennial. Remember, perennials come back every year, annuals do not. And then seeing what plants you can grow in your zone. Number three is to determine what type of garden you want, a vegetable, a container, or just trees, shrubs, and flowers, or a combination of all. Number four, or is to design it out using a pencil and a paper or use one of the pre-made designs from gardeners.com. Number five is seeing what seeds you can start now while it's winter. This gives you a great winter project to start and it's perfect to do with kids. Number six is to start buying or making a list of your materials. And number seven, of course, the cheesy one is to just enjoy the process. Gardening has become something that's therapeutic to me, something that I just crave doing. And when it's nice out and the weather's good, I'm just constantly thinking of my garden. I hope that these seven steps encouraged you, helped you a little bit with getting started, especially if you're new. I was new not that long ago. So I just really hope that you enjoyed listening to it. Thank you for hanging out with me the past 20, 15, 20 minutes. I really appreciate it. 
Make sure to subscribe to our podcast, Married to Remodeling. It would mean the world to us. We post new episodes every Friday. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and we will see you next week. Bye.